Vasishta continued, It is the infinite consciousness alone that shines as the world here. We have to get over our conviction in an external world. Everything is right. Everything is happening right here, right now, within consciousness. It is also of the nature of consciousness. You can get a sense of this if you just consider that all your sense experiences are not happening out there. They're happening here. When I hear a sound, when I hear the seagull, I point out there, don't I? But I'm hearing it here. How can I not be hearing it here? But then we transpose that experiencing. We project it into something that is happening out there. But that hearing is happening here. It's happening here, right here, right now. We detract from that reality by insisting it's caused by an external source. But we have absolutely no way, either directly or indirectly, of knowing that external source. How can we say it's got any reality whatsoever? In reality, however, it is neither world, nor void, nor even consciousness. As soon as you start putting a label on it, as soon as you start conceptualizing it, you've lost focus. You've lost focus of the reality. Only this much can be said. That which is called the world is not that. It is not what we think it is. And in a way it's only what we think it is. Because it is subtler than even space, it appears to be other than what it is. It's so subtle that we overlook it continuously. It's so pervasive as well that we overlook it continuously. It's always here. It's always here. It's like air or like water to the fish. We don't think about it most of the time. We don't even realize it's there. Between this and that is the body of consciousness, and that body is experienced as an object of perception. So what's this and that? This and that, internal, external. This is one of the fundamental divisions we make, isn't it? One of the fundamental discriminations between our internal world and this external world. It's a discrimination which has no fundamental reality. But it's a fundamental one that we make. So between this internal reality and that external reality is the body. The body is what connects the two, isn't it? Uh, here it's described as the body of consciousness. And that body is experienced as an object of perception. So we create the notion of the body to mediate between internal experience and external experience. But again, this is all a fabrication, it's all a way of thinking. This division between internal and external is not real. So therefore, how can the body which makes that distinction be real as well? However, such a creation has no cause, and hence there was no reason for it to arise. How then can it be said to exist now? Therefore, there is no justification to assume the existence of the external universe, not even an atom of it. If something is seen as the external universe here, surely that is the infinite consciousness in fact. There's absolutely no reason for any argument for something to be arising outside consciousness. I suspect the deep conviction that we have in an external reality is to do with control. We really need to feel that we've got some control, some power. So if we assume there's a me here and a reality out there, 
That's the basic fundamental discrimination that we need to make in order to satisfy this need for control. If there isn't something out there, then how can we have any control? I, I suspect this might be the basic drive to believe in this external reality. It's because we feel that we don't have control of it that we feel it must be there. There are things happening which we cannot control. Therefore, it must be external, it must be real. And yet we don't really have any control over the internal things either. This is what drives traditional yoga, this need for control. So I suggest to you, if you're having trouble in letting go of the belief in an external reality, to what extent is this simply an expression of your need for control? The argument being that because you haven't got any control over it, it must be real. That's the argument, isn't it? We're told here there's no justification to assume the existence of the external universe, not even an atom of it. It'd be interesting to see if I can think of any justification for it. I can't, actually. I think this need for control is the main justification for it. So we need to examine that need for control. No, can't think of anything. So it's all the infinite consciousness. So it's all consciousness which is doing this. Things arise within consciousness. We make this fundamental discrimination into internal and external. We also make a fundamental discrimination between waking and dreaming. And this is what consciousness does. It does it within itself. It's a process of infinite variety. This is why it's called the infinite consciousness.